Mr. Warren. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and thank you very much for letting us have an extra round here. Mr. Clayton, last December, President-elect Trump's transition team announced that Carl Icahn would be serving as special advisor to the president on issues related to regulatory reform. Now, as you know, Mr. Icahn is a longtime activist investor with holdings of more than $16 billion. He has massive holdings in public companies like CVR Energy, an oil refinery, and Herbalife uh, medical uh, supplement manufacturer. And as far as we can tell, he has not divested any of these investments despite his role in this administration shaping regulatory policy that affects the companies that he's invested in. Now, about two weeks after Mr. Icahn was named to this position, you were nominated to lead the SEC. And according to news reports, Mr. Icahn helped President-elect Trump choose you. It, that's troubling for a number of reasons, especially considering that the SEC is actively investigating Herbalife, one of Mr. Icahn's largest investments. So, Mr. Clayton, have you had any conversations or other communications with Mr. Icahn since the election on November 8th? Um, the, news, the news reports that Carl Icahn had, um, I, I don't know. I have no knowledge I, that that I would just be asked, true. No, no, but I'm, I'm getting to you. Uh, after, I was, after my nomination was announced, um, I, had a, I had a bit of heads up that it was going to be announced, but after it was announced, um, I got a call to ask me to meet with Carl Icahn, and I met with him. So you met with Carl Icahn not before you were nominated, but after you were nominated? Correct. And can you tell us what you talked about? We talked about Mr. Icahn's view um, on the importance of uh, activist investors and how they, through their methods, um, drive performance of public companies. And let me guess, he thinks activist investors are a good things in, thing and should be encouraged in the marketplace. I, I, think, I think he thinks they, they do well for markets. Yeah. Did he talk about any of his investments? No. All right. So he just talked generally about his view and talked about his view about how the SEC should... No. No, no, no real specifics on So he just wanted to give you his general view on activist investors knowing that you were the SEC chair nominee. Correct. And that was the only conversation you had with him? No. We, or with any of his people? No, we talked. I mean, that, that conversation? Uh -huh. That was the only time I've spoken with Mr. Icon or his people before, okay. after, during. And that was the only topic of the conversation when you met, the two of you? We, he congratulated me. We talked Fair to enough. people we knew in common, that kind of thing. It's the first time I met him. Okay. If... You are confirmed. Do you agree that it would be inappropriate for you to have any conversations with Mr. Icahn about the SEC's regulatory or enforcement plans, especially given his massive financial interests in various SEC decisions? If I'm confirmed and I'm in the seat of the chairman of the SEC, I, I think it's important to talk to participants in the markets of all types. Including and, those that there are massive ongoing investigations? That, that is something that needs to be navigated very carefully. If there's a massive ongoing investigation, that's why we have counsel and protocol. And it may be that it's completely inappropriate to talk to somebody. But what I, what I want to say is receiving information about what participants in our capital markets think about them from all different types of people is an important part of the job. If there's a, but, but to your point, Senator, I, I agree with you. If there's an ongoing investigation and there would be the appearance of impropriety or, you know, even the appearance of impropriety, it may, it may be inappropriate to have that kind of meeting. I'd like you to upgrade that may be inappropriate to you believe it is inappropriate. I, I'm not going to totally prejudge it, but I totally, I totally get your I, point. I'd feel totally a lot happier if you would totally prejudge that this is inappropriate. <laughs> so, so let me go on from there just okay. a little bit. Uh, in February, Mr. Icon purchased a significant stake in Bristol Myers Squibb, the massive multinational drug company. And to be clear, he purchased this stake months after he was appointed as a special advisor to the president for regulatory policy. So let me do this as quickly as I can. Mr. 
Mr. Clayton, I just want to ask you generally, can federal government's regulatory decisions affect the value of holdings in a drug company like Bristol-Myers Squibb? Uh, uh, yeah, yes, Senator. Yes, good. And can the value of those shares be affected by FDA policies? Yes. Good. And patent decisions? Yes. And Medicare and Medicaid decisions? Yeah, good. Because of course they could. Yeah. And Mr. Icahn is helping dictate Trump administration policy at the same time that he is buying stock in this company. It is almost impossible to imagine how he would not have some inside information about how these policies would affect a company like Bristol Myers. So, Mr. Clayton, if Mr. Icahn had inside information about federal regulatory policy affecting Bristol Myers, and he chose to purchase shares in the company based on that information, is that potentially a violation of securities laws? As, as we both know. In general. Uh, okay, as we both know, the, que the question of the scope of the securities laws around insider trading, et cetera, is it's a very facts and circumstances analysis. If, if he had inside information. Depen but it, depend it depends on where it came from, what duty, How about types of things. How about came from the fact that he was appointed by the president to get this information and actually to create this inside information? I, I think, I think we're, we're assuming a lot. I don't think we are assuming a lot, Mr. Mr. Clayton. And I appreciate that you want to be fair here. I know I need to stop because I'm over my time and the chair has been very indulgent here. But we are talking about an administration that just has conflicts everywhere. And it is very difficult to determine whether someone is actually working in the interests of the American people or they're just lining their own pockets or doing some secret blend of the two. The American people should not be on guess about that. And when Carl Icahn is influencing policy that will affect companies and then he is investing in those companies, buying and selling in those companies, that creates a conflict of interest that just it's just beyond what we're even talking about everywhere else. And I just want to make the point that we're going to have to count on you. The American people are going to have to count on you. And I want to hear that you are clear that this is not right, that this will be investigated, that there's not going to be chummy conversations, and that we will see some real enforcement of the law on insider trading. I do not understand how we can have someone who continues to trade in a market and is influencing regulatory policy simultaneously. And I want to hear the chair of the SEC say he's going to look into this and I hope put a stop to it. So I will stop there. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Warren. Thank you.